It is the final week of the SPL Draft League, and today we are matched up against the New York Marauders. As always, we're going to take a look at the matchup, we're going to talk about the team that I bring, and then we're going to get into the match. So, to start things off here, looking at my opponent's team here, they have some pretty interesting threats, and I actually really like the team. Obviously, Iron Boulder is incredibly scary. It can be really fast, faster than everything if it's running booster energy with a speed boost. Also, there is the Quackleval who can be running Aqua Step to get a speed boost, and also Moxie, and this thing can get out of hand extremely quickly. Obviously, also has coverage with like close combat on Darkrai, um, and uh, in general, there's like the Rillaboom. Infernape is very scary. Um, there's also the option for like a Hydrapple who could be running like an Assault Vest and live anything special. Other than that, some things that I am afraid of would be like a, a Prankster Thunderous. Uh, Mabostip is kind of a sleeper mon with its stakeout ability, able to do a ton of damage on switch-ins. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what the team is that I'm going to bring here. So first of all, considering that this entire season has been an absolutely you know, humiliating dumpster fire, I did not spend a whole lot of time prepping. I gave myself like 20 minutes to throw some stuff together, and we're just going to roll with some vibes. Now, with that being said, our first pick is obviously Furret. I, I figure I have to bring the Furret. We have literally nothing to lose. And uh, Focus Sash Furret is going to function as our dedicated lead here, mostly because uh, he does not have any ghost types other than Terra's on his team. So I'm thinking maybe I can come in, frisk, at least see what their lead is going to have in terms of an item, and then potentially like tidy up some Stealth Rock or go for an Endeavor once I get down to 1 HP. But basically, because I just have to bring Furret. Literally, why not? And that's that's the plan with Furret. I can endeavor at 1 HP and then quick attack stuff because they don't have a ghost. And Furret is the goat. It's probably not going to work, but I'm just going to bring it anyway. Next up, of course, we do have the Darkrai. This time I figure, you know, I've been straying away from using Hypnosis Darkrai. This time I'm going Wide Lens. And also, to throw a little wrench in the plans here, I'm going to go with a Swords Dance Physical Attacking Darkrai just because... Nobody really expects that, and it's like, why would I not use my base 135 special attack? Because we are working with some goofy shit today. I just want to see if I can, like, land a hypnosis, set up some swords dances, try to catch, like, an assault vest mon, um, and hit hard with, like, knockoff. I also have poison jab for things like the hydrapple, and I don't know. I literally just, this is dark guy. Next up, we have Jolteon. Continuing with the goofy sets, I'm just bringing weird stuff here, as you can pretty much tell. Now, this Jolteon is working with the most unconventional thing possible, and that is going to be Flame Orb and Quick Feet. So listen, Quick Feet gives you basically a free choice scarf if you're status. Now, the good thing about this Jolteon is that if I run max speed with Quick Feet, I literally outspeed like an Iron Boulder after um, a booster energy by like one point, and... Not only that, but I also outspeed a Quackleval if it has two speed boosts and it's jolly max speed. So I think it would just be hilarious if I can get Quick Feet Jolteon to outspeed something that it should never be able to outspeed, like a literally jolly Quackleval at <laughs> plus two uh, speed. It gets outsped by this Jolteon by like, I think a few points. So I thought that was just kind of hilarious. I'm also working with the Terra Grass. Uh, I also have the Terra Blast here and um, we're going to be able to try to at least knock out uh, the Iron Boulder with that, which would be funny to be able to outspeed it and then do the Terra thing. Um, but in general, I told myself at the beginning of this season, Quick Feet Jolteon would be hilarious to run. So I only have one more chance left to do that. So that's that's the Jolteon. Next up, we have the good friend Brian. Now I'm working with uh, standard Chili Reception Icy Rock here to be able to enable the Bear Tick. Uh, other than that, I have coverage with like Psychic, Ice Beam, and Sludge Bomb. And uh, Sludge Bomb mostly just for Hydrapple. Or sorry, Hi Ice Beam mostly just for Hydrapple. I have Psychic to hit pretty much everything else and just, this guy, he's here to he's here to set up Chili Reception. The fun thing about my team is that it always ends up being that Bear Tick looks like my win condition on paper. And in order to use Bear Tick, I basically need this guy with the Icy Rock and Chili Reception to come in uh, and tell some jokes. I've got some defense investment here along with max HP to take uh, one Earthquake from the Iron Boulder and uh, at least like a super effective knockoff from pretty much anything else. So. That's our boy Brian, and that leads us into the dude Bear Tick. So I'm, run I'm running with the Lumberry here, just in case he wants to go with like a Will-O-Wisp on the Galarian Weezing, um, or basically any other status. And should allow me to try to set up a Swords Dance here. Now I had an interesting kind of dilemma with the Bear Tick, where I did I did not prep against this team very well. But what I did look at was I'm gonna need a Terra Blast Electric to kill the. Uh, Quackaval, and that thing is an extreme threat. So I'm running with the Terror Blast. That actually takes place of close combat, which uh, Earthquake, Icicle Crash, and close combat kills everything on their team except for 
uh, the freaking duck. So I'm going with Terra Electric Terra Blast here, along with Earthquake and Icicle Crash, and we have great coverage against a lot of their team. The only thing that this thing gets outsped by, I would be like Fast Choice Scarfers and the Iron Boulder if it's working with the uh, the Quark Drive Speed Boost. So that's the that's the Bear Tick, and then our final member is gonna be the Gyarados. I figure an Intimidate switch in could actually be really nice here. I wanna go with the heavy duty boots because I feel like I could switch this thing in and out quite a bit. Uh, but other than that, I also have the substitute to try to catch uh, like a status from something like a, a Weezing or uh, in general, just go for, uh, get some good momentum with a substitute and then Dragon Dance is uh, is always just nice along with uh, Waterfall for Stab. And then the Ice Fang is here to hit the Hydrapple and the Rillaboom. And uh, that is the Gyarados, and that's the team, boys. I literally threw this together, I think, in less than 20 minutes. Um, and I also didn't do any any real m mock battles or any actual prep. So we're just going to see how it goes and uh, roll with it. Let's get into it. All right, fellas, it is game time, and it's time to see how the season's going to end here. So looking at the team preview, a pretty expected squad here. They obviously have the Iron Boulder. Uh, the Quackable is really nice, and the Rillaboom is going to be here to have some priority. Uh, potentially pivots and honestly hits me pretty hard. Now what's also interesting is they're bringing both Mabostiff and the Proba Pass, which are Terra Captains. So we don't really know what's going to Terra there. We also have our two Terra Captains of our own in both Beartick and the Jolteon. But overall he's got a very interesting team comp here and it feels like there's some tricks under the sleeve. So I plan to just lead off with my Ferret still and just see what this thing can do. And uh, basically just because why not? Let's get into it. So my dude Drew is going to go ahead and lead off with the Rillaboom. Now, I lead off with the Ferret, of course. Looks like we're nervous for our job interview here and very scary monkey. At least I'm able to frisk this thing, find the leftovers, which uh, doesn't really provide me much intel. However, they just go ahead and spill some green juice all over the floor and the grassy surge is set up. And this is actually, it's an interesting position for uh, the Ferret here. I'm considering switching and saving my Focus Ash. It doesn't seem like they want to set up the hazards, at least early. Um, and I also know that this thing could probably U-turn, not do a whole lot of damage to me. And the moral of the story is I'm probably not going to be able to get down to 1 HP and Dever and then do my quick attack stuff. Because it turns out they actually go for the priority glassy, Grassy Glide, or Glassy. Throws a glass at my face. It does do a nice chunk of damage there. However, uh, me going for the knockoff is pretty much... This Ferret is pretty much a waste at this point. And uh, I kind of am going to be playing this 5 versus 6 from the start. I kind of figured that was going to be the case with Ferret. But I had to bring the Ferret. You know, for the last game, literally... Why not? Nothing matters. Anyway, uh, I just figure I'm going to go right into the Gyarados here. I, I think I could potentially save the Ferret. It's faster than a few things on their team. I could endeavor them down to pretty low HP, maybe get a knockoff later. Literally, who knows? All I know is Gyarados switches in pretty freely here because I get the Intimidate. However, they decide to go for the Leech Seed, expecting the switch. Kind of an obvious switch there, um, but Gyarados doesn't really lose anything from coming in at this point. And uh, he gets himself back to full HP just from the soaking up the grass. So... I don't really want Gyarados to stay in here and lose too much health. I can't really set up being Leech Seeded, and I'm kind of in a bad position there. So I just decided to pivot right into Brian. I got the brain going, and I figure I have a decent matchup against the Rillaboom. Um, but they're actually going to end up switching themselves, which we do kind of expect. However, this Slow King should be able to take attacks from pretty much everything here. As they decide to switch into the Quackwaval, and this thing is... Not really in the greatest position against the Slow King. I can obviously threaten with a Psychic here. Uh, they do have two Dark Types in the back, so I just decided to go for the Chilly Reception. I figure they're kind of forced to switch at this point, and I can get a matchup, whether that's going into Bear Tick and starting to set that thing up, or uh, at least get a nice pivot. So they do decide to bring in the Skun Tank, uh, which tells me this thing is definitely here to sponge special attacks. Uh, it's just a, it's a good Dark Ride check. And uh, at least the Chili Reception does allow me a switch into whatever I like. Now, I don't really want to go into Bear Tick this early, mostly just because I haven't seen a lot of the threats on the team. Like, I don't know what the Iron Boulder's working with. Um, there could be Choice Scarfers in the back. I just decide to go right into Gyarados, and I'm going to save the Snow for later. So, I get that Intimidate off on this thing, as it's likely just going to have uh, something like a knockoff and things like that. Could also try to go for something like a Toxic, and I figure I could probably just go for a Substitute here. If anything, it'll give me a little bit of scouting opportunity here. But they decide to switch out this Gun Tank, um, and he's going to go right back into the Rillaboom. So, 
Brother Boom seems like it's probably gonna be a defensive set. However, my knockoff from Furret did do a nice chunk. And with the substitute up, I can't really afford to go for a Dragon Dance. Now, the Grassy Terrain does disappear the turn this thing comes in, so it's unable to set it up, and I don't really want a Dragon Dance here, mostly just because they knock out my substitute here, I then Dragon Dance behind it, uh, but then, you know, Ice Fang still just doesn't kill. So, at this point, I'm just going to take the free damage. Uh, we do outspeed, however, I can get the Ice Fang off, and it almost is a two-hit KO. Extremely close would be super nice. If that's a two-hit KO there, which would be really nice. But they just go ahead and break the substitute with the Grassy Glide. Uh, it does not have priority if the Grassy Terrain is not up, which tells me it's probably his attacking move, or at least his best one against uh, the Gyarados here. So at this point, we've seen the Glide. We've seen the, uh, the Leech Seed. I consider going for another substitute here. Um, and they actually end up switching, however, I just decide to go for the damage. I know that if I can get some good chip, or at least knock that thing low enough to where Jolteon can finish off the Rillaboom, uh, Jolteon's actually in a pretty good spot. But, they just decide to bring in the Dance and Duck, and of course Ice Fang doesn't do much to this, and I also don't really have anything that can hit uh, this thing for much damage. Now, I do want to try to conserve the Gyarados as much as possible, uh, because Intimidate switch-ins are super nice here, so I'm going to end up switching, and I just decide to go right back into everybody's favorite brainwashed boy. Uh, we go into the boy, the dude Brian, who uh, he should be able to take any attack here. I do have some defense investment uh, with the max HP, and uh, my main goal is to try to conserve this thing as much as possible to get some snow. Now, they actually end up making a double switch. They likely predict uh, the Gloking to come in, and they go into the Mabostiff. Now, obviously Gloking is very important to me. It kind of feels like the win con, so I do want to conserve this thing. And I decide to hard switch right into the Gyarados. I'm like, okay, I can intimidate here um, and likely probably go down because I'm thinking this thing is stakeout. Now, Gyarados comes in. I get the intimidate. Turns out uh, it is actually Guard Dogs. So that gives it an attack boost rather than an attack drop, which makes a whole lot of sense. My draft has two intimidate mons, so running stakeout there or running guard dog makes way more sense. Um, I, I, whenever I see Mabostiff, I always just uh, kind of just immediately default to this thing being uh, stakeout, which doubles its offensive stat if you switch out against it. So that is not ideal. I now decide to bring in Dustbuster. I'm like, okay, Furt, you're probably not gonna do anything here. Uh, and if this thing is not Choice Scarf, I actually outspeed and I can endeavor it down low. However, we do frisk the fact that this thing is Choice Scarf and that uh, is actually really bad for me. Now, the only thing this allows me to do is go for a quick attack. So hell yeah for it. I'm glad I, I'm glad I brought this thing to uh, do nothing. And uh, we do go down to a crunch. So the good news about at least knowing that this thing is Scarf is that uh, I now have kind of a free option to switch into Darkrai. So uh, the you know the guard dog intimidate thing is not really going to be that detrimental to the match because um, he's just forced into clicking crunch again and. This is kind of set up fodder for the Dark Rise. So I decide they're probably gonna have to switch here. I'm just gonna go for the Raw Dog Hypnosis. I have the Wide Lens and I'm really hoping that that shit is wide enough because it would be real nice to hit some Hypnosis today. So they decide to go into the Skun Tank. Now, this is definitely gonna be the special tank to handle the Dark Cry. However, you already know I'm bringing the Physical Dark Cry. The problem is Physical Dark Cry also just does absolutely jack shit against the Skun Tank. And even if I stay in and Swords Dance uh, knockoff slash poison jab is gonna do like 30%. So I'm kind of in a bad spot there. I do get at least a little bit of bad dreams, which is kind of fun. However, I figure, you know, with this thing asleep, um, I'm gonna take this opportunity just to go right into Slow King. Now, the main reason why we go Galarian Slow King is just because I know that I can even take like a crunch here and uh, have enough to be able to go for the chilly reception. So they do burn that turn of sleep. And at this point, my main goal is definitely just to get back up that snow because Bear Tick uh, is looking pretty good, at least with the prep I have, I feel like. So they do actually end up waking up, which is wildly unfortunate because that allows them to go for the knockoff. And while you know it doesn't do a whole lot, it actually knocks off my icy rock. And that is extremely unfortunate because I'm able to go for the chilly reception at least and switch out and then you know get regenerator and heal. However, without that icy rock, instead of lasting for eight turns, we are gonna have five turns with the snow. So it's finally time to get in Bear Tick. I figured this is, this is pretty much my best opportunity here to see what this thing can do. And uh, we're gonna try to make use of these snow turns. So here's the thing, at least with the defense boost from the snow, I know that Bear Tick takes any attack from this thing other than I guess if it had like flamethrower, which still doesn't even knock me out. So. Bear Tick is actually pretty free to go ahead and click the Swords Dance here, which is going to make it so 
Uh, I actually have access to pretty much Oko, literally everything on their team, once I have a Swords Dance up. And that is mostly because I do have the Terra Electric Terra Blast for this exact situation. So I decide to dance with swords that bring in the duck, and uh, while I get my plus two attack, as it turns out, they're actually running the Mirror Herb. That's going to copy my stat boost, and I'm like, well, damn, this dude actually... Uh, running the mirror herb is always fun to see. However, luckily, while I didn't prep pretty much at all for this match, I did realize that uh, Terra Electric Terra Blast is the only thing that allows me uh, to kill the Quackoval. So I just decide, you know, I do outspeed with the Slush Rush in the snow. And after a sword stance, there's pretty much no way that this thing uh, is going to be able to live. You know, we saw its item. The mirror herb is obviously not going to be a choice card, so it can't outspeed. I can go for that Terra Electric, look like a damn goofball with the light bulb on my head um, and uh, Bertic is going to come in clutch here with that Terra Blast and the Mirror Herb about gave me a heart attack but then I was like wait actually this is this is fine so that does take care uh, of the duck and that's actually not only one of the biggest threats in the game but one of the scariest mons for draft um, and I dreaded going up against that thing however Bertic works perfectly uh, we do burn our Terra however which does kind of suck because now I can't use it for Jolteon who I would enjoy it as well, but uh, they decide to go into the Rillaboom. So the bad news about changing my type is that being no longer Ice type, I no longer get the 50% boost uh, in defense. So a glassy, gra glassy, grassy glide does in fact do about half to me, but it does allow me to Icicle Crash uh, and finish off the Rillaboom. So Rillaboom came in and it set up the grassy terrain. There's a few things about grassy terrain that I feel like not a lot of people know about. Um, but, however, they decide to go into the Iron Boulder. So, Iron Boulder is going to activate its Quark Drive, and my worst fear is that it's a speed boost. It is, which does allow this thing to outspeed Bear Tick, even in the snow. But, I'm feeling like if they go for Earthquake, which they do, um, we're actually able to hang on. And that is because Grassy Terrain reduces damage from Earthquake. We're able to live in an Icicle Crash takes care of the Iron Boulder, Buddy's head is spinning all crazy because he's like, the hell just happened? Um, and that is extremely clutch. Bear Tick is absolutely poking holes that we need to happen right now. But sadly, the snow is going to go away. So that is not the best news, just because now a uh, Choice Scarf Mabostiff can obviously come in here and finish me off. But Bear Tick looks really good against the remaining mons on their team. I have pretty much the ability to uh, knock anything out here, even if I don't have Swords Dances, so I decide I definitely need to switch out on this thing. And I'm gonna go into Jolteon. Now, we know that this thing is not stake out, so I should be able to take any attack from this. Goes for the Crunch, which we are able to live. Uh, a defense drop does not matter, however. Uh, but what this does is hard switching in Jolteon um, is actually going to activate my Flame Orb, which is hilarious. I Wanted to run Quick Feet Jolteon just because it outspeeds Iron Boulder if it was a uh, plus speed uh, Quark Drive boost, which it was, and that was extremely clutch, but uh, it, it didn't end up working out for me. So now I just have a burnt Jolteon that's real fast for pretty much no reason, uh, at least for the fact that I am going to be able to outspeed Mabostiff. So they're forced to switch out there. I can go for the Alluring Voice, which would have been great chip on the Mabostiff, but they do still have this big nose asshole which is the damn Probopass, who uh, obviously takes nothing from the Alluring Voice, plus the combination of Leftovers and the Grassy Terrain. He's going to heal it back to full. And as I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, okay, I don't really have a whole lot of answers for this. Bear Tick needs to Earthquake this thing. Obviously, Grassy Terrain is still up. I need that to be gone before I can Earthquake it. And also, this thing has the potential to be running the Sturdy ability. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to kind of prioritize some chip here. It seems like Jolteon doesn't really provide me a whole lot of value in the remainder of this match. So I just decide I'm going to stay in, go for some Thunderbolts, uh, try to get some chip on this thing. And not only that, but break the Sturdy to guarantee uh, that Bear Tick can finish it off. So they actually end up going for the Terra Steel. Uh, which is uh, going to put the old axe on his head. And it turns out, I'm, uh, the whole time I was like, what is this thing going to do that's going to ruin this game for me? And while you don't generally see setup on this thing, it is running the curse. And that is actually wildly unfortunate because not only is it giving it attack boosts uh, to start potentially boosting up whatever heavy slam or whatever this thing wants to do, but also it's getting defense. And now it's to the point where Bear Tick is not going to have enough with an earthquake. And I desperately need some damage off on this thing to open up that late game. So I was thinking this thing probably just goes for like a late game Stealth Rock to try to chip Bear Tick switching in. Uh, but instead, it's now in a spot where this buddy, buddy's cursing and that is actually quite scary. So I'm like, there's nothing else I can really do here. I can't afford to switch. I just decide to stay in, go for a T-Bolt, try to roll for like a Para or something like that. 
Uh, but they actually just end up finishing me off with that heavy slam. So down goes the Jolteon, and uh, that's honestly kind of fine because I needed Jolteon out of there to be able to try to get something going against this anyway. And uh, I'm actually in an even worse position because I gave myself a damn physical attacking Darkrai today, basically for the memes, and now I'm looking at a cursing yeah, Proba Pass. But there's a few things that the Darkrai can do, and uh, all skinny legs over here, well, you can't see them legs, they are there. I, I assure you, I don't know what's up with Darkrai's design, but I assure you, you have skinny ass legs. Anyway. I have two options here. Either I can go for a knockoff, get some chip, also get rid of leftovers, or try to roll for a hypnosis to hit. And uh, I've already gotten lucky on a hypnosis once today, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for the knockoff. It should put this thing to about 50%, which is close for Bear Tick to be able to do it. And I also have the Glarian Slow King, who should at least be able to hit it on the special side. But they actually have the body press, and at plus one, Darkrai shows off that decent defensive stat I'm able to barely hang on. And now I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for the Hypnosis. It's kind of my win con at this point. If I can put this thing to sleep and the wide lens comes in clutch, we are able to land two Hypnosises today. So it is absolutely <laughs> my lucky day. And uh, we're actually also gonna be able to get some bad dreams now, so we get some chip there. And at this point, the plan is to just kind of go for knockoffs. I really wish that uh, I was running a different type of dark ride today, not gonna lie, but uh, obviously knockoff's the only thing I can do here, and after another turn of bad dreams, uh, it's easily in a spot to where Bear Tick can finish it off. However, they make a good play, they're actually gonna switch right back into the Skun Tank here. Skun Tank, again, uh, we're actually able to find out as I go for the knockoff, it's obviously gonna do a nice little bit of chip, but also uh, gets rid of the Assault Vest. So that's the benefit of trying to run the physical dark ride, is that people run like an Assault Vest check. Um, and uh, hitting it on the physical side is end up better. However, of course, this Darkrai cannot do anything to anything. I kind of just toss moves on here, and uh, this gun tank is able to finish me off with a sucker punch, uh, but that is mostly fine because we were able to switch out the the Proba Pass. And what that does is it loses its defense boost and an earthquake from Bear Tick. Uh, I'm feeling like Bear Tick is actually able to sweep the match here. Not only that, but I can bring in Galarian Slowking, who can freely get up a Chili Receptor. I no longer have an item, there's no chance that Knockoff kills me here. I'm able to get up the snow, open up the door for Bear Tick to be faster, and win the game. They go for the Knockoff, obviously I do live, I'm gonna go ahead and tell a bad joke, and I flinch. Let's go ahead and pause for a second. If you're like me, you may be thinking to yourself, since when the hell can Knockoff flinch you? And it cannot. What can, however, is the fact that Skuntank has the ability Stench, which gives you a 10% chance to flinch uh, on a move. So Knockoff gets the 10% chance, does not allow me to set up my snow, and that is incredibly unfortunate because now Bear Tick does not have the late game sweep we were hoping for, and uh, that's actually probably the most hilarious ending to a match like that I've ever seen. He knock off fl flinching me there. I was like, literally, what the hell just happened? I sta even started telling my joke, but it, it uh, I feel like the joke should, at least if I start, st set the freaking snow up and then let Bear Tick use it. Now, the only issue is the, he had sucker punch as he revealed earlier, so we lose the game anyway, but I thought that was just an absolute hilarious ending. And uh, <laughs> that's, gonna, that's gonna do it for my draft league season. And pretty much career because holy hell, I uh, probably could not be worse than this if I even tried. And so that's really depressing, but shout out to Drew for a fantastic game. This guy's a really fun team uh, and he plays it extremely well. Definitely check out his channel. His link is in the description. We're gonna be rooting for the dude in the playoffs. Uh, of course, with that, the season is officially over for you boy. And the one thing that we did learn is I'm absolutely bad in any serious competition, which uh, I've come to terms with. Listen, my channel, I bring meme stuff to battling against absolute randos pretty much 100% of the time. And well, I didn't think I was gonna do necessarily great in this, um, it truly showed that yeah, I did not even come close to competing. Um, but uh, I tried to have fun along the way and um, yeah, catch you guys next time.